welcome to this very special edition. We're calling it the D Street Jitters. With me, Aisha Faridi, as well as Nikunj Dalmi are joining in in the ET Now Mumbai Center. And what a week it turned out to be. After a day's break, it turned out to be a freaky Friday. We've lost three and a quarter percent over the week for the index alone. The Sensex has fallen roughly about three and a half percent. And the small cap index, hold your breath, it's a five and a half percent slide that you've seen over the week for the small cap index and the mid cap index as well, falling about 4.6 percent. A slew of experts joining in the next half an hour to really analyze and dissect as to what went wrong in the market. Joining us today, Madhusudan Kela, Basant Maheshwari, Kunal Botra, and of course our in-house experts as well are with us to try and analyze what was going on with the market. But really, Nikunj, I guess it all boils down to what was happening on Friday. I mean, what explains the fact that you woke up, came after a day's break with a Dow rally of 250 points, but Yes Bank did the trick, HFCs did the trick. I don't know what to really point my finger at. So if you're a Yes Bank shareholder, this was nothing short of a nightmare. Yeah. If you are a NBFC uh, shareholder, this was a bad and a poor week of trade. But I guess the fabric of the market, Aisha, because of macros has been weak and the liquidity which everyone took for granted is now reversing. So the basic parameters which always drive the market in the short term, which is uh, momentum, liquidity, and little bit of uh, you know event eagerness none of them currently are on side of the bulls now you can always look at uh, the screen and say okay this is just the beginning or the naysayers would say this is uh, in a, a clear indication of what happened in 2008 and 2013 because the screen reminds you of some scary fall because today two nifty 50 companies registered a drop of more than 30 percent on an intraday basis so whatever may be the underlying uh, you know positioning Aisha the buyers are not there and the buyers either are conserving cash or they don't have cash when it comes to HNI traders I don't think they have cash when it comes to domestic investors they want to conserve cash yeah Okay, let's try and analyze and dissect and get your 360 degree perspective of what was going on. First, I want to take it across to Vivek and Poona, my research colleagues, to try and analyze what went by in Friday's trading session. And uh, Vivek, to you first, you know, you've been chatting with dealing rooms all across today's panic day. What is the sense that you're coming out with? Is this going to stall come Monday morning or could we see another rumor and that would just be a telltale sign of as to how fragile and brittle this market is getting? Well, it was an extremely tough day for the market, uh, given the fact that most of the leading rooms actually saw a lot of margin calls uh, getting triggered, a lot of MTM, uh, you know, getting triggered, and uh, dealing rooms actually felt the pain of a big blow coming across most of the NBFC stocks uh, today. In fact, um, the fall in the NBFCs and the fall in some of the private, the private banks uh, led to such an intense sell-off that uh, at one point during the day, the Nifty had fallen almost 500 points, to be precise. Uh, 480 points and in fact went below the 11,000 level uh, intraday as well. The Nifty Bank, you know, saw further cuts, uh, almost uh, 1,400 points given up intraday, uh, testing the 25, uh, very crucial 25,000 level. So what actually happened? Uh, the sell-off, you know, that was started in the morning by Yes Bank, uh, uh, two, three hours into the session, you actually saw some of the large NBSCs. You, you saw names like DHFL. Uh, almost tanking over 30-35% at one point DHFL was down 50% and once DHFL you know very large uh, uh, NBFC uh, f fell a uh, lot of the housing finance companies and other NBFCs also joined in a sympathy fall and if you actually saw uh, stocks in this particular pack were down between 10 to 40% uh, at one point during the session so what actually happened uh, you know there was unconfirmed reports of a very large NBFC actually selling a bond uh, almost at 11% this led to market fearing that there was a liquidity crisis at this particular company and this actually led to such a sharp sell off uh, where the stocks saw uh, losses of almost 50% uh, intraday. Poonam, what explains the way some of these HFC, uh, HFCs fell? Divan Housing down 45%, uh, Indebul's Housing and Index Constituent down 25%. Pick any stock within HFCs and that was down in double digits. Uh, that's right. In fact, uh, first up, if you uh, look at Divan Housing Finance, it's down over 40% in trade. Now, what happened is uh, DSP Mutual Fund did uh, sell uh, DHFL paper at around 11 or percent in the secondary market. It, we do not really know the reasons, but it could also be one of the reasons could be um, holdings in RNFS Group. This is still unconfirmed. But the fact that this secondary market transaction, which happened at 11%, did lead to a good amount of 
panic selling across uh, uh, DHFL and across most of the NVFCs as well as HFC stocks. In fact, entities are definitely looking at risk aversion post the entire LNFS issue. Companies and stocks uh, which do have corporate governance issues have been hurt the most. For instance, the one housing, enables housing as well. And even, uh, I would put even Yes Bank here in this bracket. There are also concerns that regulators are increasing their vigilance on NBFCs, HFCs. There are concerns that RBI probably has instructed banks to go slower in terms of lending to NBFCs and HFCs. That also did lead to some amount of concern there. Not just that, uh, regulators being vigilant on corporate governance issues uh, did hurt uh, companies. There's also a possibility uh, that uh, some amount of caution may still continue. Uh, DHFL did state that uh, they have they have enough liquidity, no exposure to RNFS, no default, no uh, dishonoring of any uh, commitment whatsoever. India Bulls Housing also <coughs> confirmed the same, but I guess caution is yet to stay. Thanks a lot for that. Market veteran Madhukela joins us uh, with his take on how one should uh, approach the market and what precisely triggered the selling uh, stampede on Friday. So Madhu, what, what happened on Friday? Uh, in the mid-afternoon, the selling was nothing short of scary. I think this is, uh, looks like a technical sell-off. As we heard, you know, both these NBFC com companies come in your channels and clarify that their short-term liquidity uh, situation is in fact very very good and when i say short term they spanned out a year of uh, they said a year for next one year uh, they have enough liquidity in the liquid accounts to match the liabilities which arises over the next one year so you know this looks like speculative uh, unwinding and uh, for a long-term investor, I can clearly say that if you really understand the company and if you have faith in the management, these are brilliant, brilliant opportunities to, uh, to buy these companies. Wherever you know that the management is solid and they will be able to uh, you know, weather this storm and come out stronger from here. Now, Madhu, parallels have been drawn with 2013 and 2008. Given that emerging markets are in a downturn, emerging market currencies are getting uh, completely smoked. Uh, the word financial media is uh, using currently to describe the emerging market uh, scare or selling is rout and amagadon. So, how can India remain isolated? That is the point which I am saying. That let's say, uh, and I just want to amply clarify that you know when I even if I mention a company's name, I'm not recommending those shares to be bought or sold. I am just saying let's say sub something like India Bull Housing Finance, which enjoys the highest credit rating by Crystal itself. You know, it's, it's a triple A paper. So for for things like that and for uh, stock markets to worry that they there will be liquidity issues in these kind of companies is completely unwarranted for in my view. But Madhu, specifically about today's uh, selling in NBFCs, interest rates are hardening, cost of capital is moving higher and historically we have seen that every time when cost of capital goes higher for financial sector, NBFCs they suffer because the regime is not favourable and NBFCs they borrow wholesale and they lend retail which could be a challenge. See, to extend that extent, I agree with you, Nikunj. You know, but you know that if your borrowing cost goes up, you will, your lending cost will also go up. And that goes up for the whole system. It doesn't go for in one or two individual companies, right? So if it, if it go up, even it will go, the borrowing cost will even go up for banks. Yesterday we saw even uh, Provident Fund said to increase the interest rate from 7.5% to 8%. So a deal of 50 basis or 75 basis a point increase in interest rate will bring down the system at halt? Certainly not. Basant, just to examine today's fall, in the light of NBFC, uh, you know, in the light of the NBFC sell-off, how much of today's selling do you think was technical in nature and how much is because of realistic factors? When I say realistic factors, over ownership, cost of capital is moving higher, valuations are getting stretched, how much of today's selling had a, had a fundamental angle to it? Uh, because the first thing is this doesn't seem to be a systemic problem and I'll tell you why. Had this been a systemic problem, the dollar would have crossed 73, bond yields would have gone up straight on. 
and you know in today's market the dif the different entities are so synchronized with each other that if one of them falls the other also falls so it's like there was a time when we used to say may the best survive now for the best to survive even the worst has to survive and that's what the government does so if ilfs has a problem it goes and catches that so coming back to today's thing of course there was a panic a sheer panic i mean how can you say there's no panic when the stocks are falling 40% 50% but this is not a pc jewelers this is not a vakrangi there's a business people have taken home loans of course we don't own divan housing it's not a recommendation but these are genuine businesses so genuine businesses just because somebody has gone and dumped some paper at 11% of course it just it suggests that there's a lack of buyers for that kind of a paper but but they'll all get passed on i mean interest rates will go up you will pass it on it's all ultimately it's what you lend at should be more than what you borrow at so i think it's a mix of that but obviously the tax now is falling harder on anything where there is suspicion so after 2 3 4 months of some sanity in the market again the same thing starts so 2 3 uh, months back we had this vakrangi the pc jewelers but those were different companies these are different companies you can't compare apples and oranges like that Prasant, is this decline the time to buy and lap up hfcs or would you say stay away till the froth settles down I think in the HFC space if you see most of them have faltered on growth so a stock like Canfin which we used to have of course we sold off long time back that's come down in the growth pattern Repco Home Finance isn't growing so fast so PNB Housing which we own has got its own stake sale issues there obviously when the stake sale happens things should rectify themselves so Divan and India Bulls were in some way the only two stocks no recommendations for anything that were in some way growing at a decent pace but then if there is so much of an issue somewhere it makes sense for any investor to sit back and analyze as to why he wants to buy it do you want to buy it just because the stock has fallen 10% or do you want to buy it because you are genuinely interested stroke convinced about the fundamental attributes and the economic character of that business so i think if you are convinced about the economic character of that business you could go ahead and buy it but then we have our own names in the nbfc space and we don't have too many names actually so uh, we have our own names in the nbfc and the private banking space and we are sticking to that i'm great having you wanted to get in this quick uh, take on how to approach the market as well as nbfcs in particular considering you track this space very closely thanks as always for joining in <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us. Uh, what really spooked the market was this assumption that uh, the LNFS issue could become disproportionately bigger for the bond market, and that could lead to some liquidity crisis. The rumor in the market was that DSP Investment Managers was forced to sell some of the key bond holding in LNFS managers. But that's the rumor. Let's get an understanding as to how much of the market concern or rumor is actually just a rumor. and what is the actual fact himendra kothari joins us now he represents uh, dsp investment managers mr kothari good evening thank you for joining us mr kothari is rnfs exposure a big problem for your for, for your mutual fund schemes i would say it is a big problem but any any kind of uh, loss is nobody likes that uh, we are already provided on nav uh, on this and has been disclosed to all the investors so it is now for our point of view it is past 50 it has been reduced to 50% of the face value so that is over with uh, we have no problem of liquidity whatsoever our our liquid fund is 100% in back or nearly 100% all tripre and very liquid uh, our even credit fund is nearly 75% is triple a or a double a plus in back there is no problem of liquidity and we have enough liquidity in all our funds and there is zero problem is zero risk that we have put it uh, i am personally confident uh, that uh, this what today what has happened uh, which is abbreviation i would say uh, over reaction uh, some short selling into some extent uh, what has happened uh, but you please ask me more questions then i can answer you Yes, we have many questions for you, Mr. Kothari, sure. and I want to talk about Divan Housing in particular. Could you quantify how much is the exposure to Divan Housing? How much did you sell today across in your personal capacity as well in your funds? First of all, I don't have any personal capacity in okay. any funds. 
uh, okay. uh, any any of Diwan Housing or any of the fund, any of that uh, thing, I buy it through my own fund itself. Uh, so I buy own liquid funds or all. Uh, uh, basically, I the way we are going about just now is we foresaw that uh, we thought that the interest rates are going up world over, and India cannot be total exception, though it is remain comparatively calm as the interest rates are moving, the margins on fixed income between the AAA or uh, I would say more than AAA is with government security and the corporates. There has to be margin spread had gone down very much so. It became too thin in fact in the last few years, which is, which is increasing and uh, which is a normal thing to happen in when the interest rates are going up. Uh, so I think there is nothing unusual about it. No, absolutely not. But could you quantify how much how much uh, quantity did you sell in Divan Housing today, and what is the balance residual quantity that you still sold. have in your funds? It was sold yesterday. I don't okay. have the exact figure, but it's around 250 crores or 200 crores. I don't have the exact figure. 300 crores was exactly sold. Now 300 crores out of a total 95,000 to 96,000 crores of our funds it is a very small amount. And we have nothing against Diwan Housing. We have nothing whatsoever we know about against or for uh, Diwan Housing. Uh, we have no information, nor we have any information on the point of view of any other companies which, which has gone down today, nor we have sold in other companies as per my knowledge. Uh, that's all I can say. Exposure do you have to HFCs besides Divan Housing in your funds? Pardon? Do you have exposure to any other housing finance companies besides Divan Housing in any of your funds? I'm sure large companies of housing finance, whether it is the HDFC, to hmm. some extent India Bulls, and uh, some extent other funds, we must be having some liquidity. But by and large, these are all short term uh, commercial paper which we are having at the moment. Okay. Just to wrap up today's discussion, uh, Mr. Kothari, do you think today's market reaction was slightly freaky and was silly? Uh, one news that a paper, a small paper was sold at 11%, that may be one desperate selling, but that really spooked the entire NBFC space? See, what happened, it's uh, not a mistake or not mistake. Uh, it is an uh, abbreviation, you can say. 10.75 somebody other mutual fund has sold. Uh, that's what I understand. Uh, and uh, uh, and 11 percent which we sold. If the market rates spreads are calling like 10 and a half, 11, and somebody sold at 11 percent, one of my trader or invest uh, our fund manager. Now, I mean I can't blame that situation that it cannot be sold in fact at that level. That is his discretion he has to do. Our objective is to keep our maturity at lower end because we are we fear money is a little bit tight from the point of view of interest rate going up our fear is interest rate and our portfolio is one of the most conservative portfolio in the mutual fund industry you check up anywhere our maturity period are also very low uh, even if it is in a bond fund our maturities are lower and we have proved right ourselves uh, the same time in liquid funds nearly 100 percent is in fact in a um, uh, like I can create cash immediate basis. So uh, we, we have no, I, I don't think there is any concern about anything in fact and our funds. Uh, for my perspective, uh, there are some misshapes like IFL which was invested, IFL, uh, it was invested at, uh, two years back, two and a half years back. It is not today it was invested. Uh, so that mistake which has been now, we have written now, that's all. Okay, Mr. Kutari, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Now, before we take a break, let's also hear out from uh, two NBFC uh, CEOs, uh, Ashwini Kumar Huda of Indiable Housing Finance. And uh, then you've got Mr. Uh, uh, v. Vardarajan, Managing Director of uh, Repro Finance. I don't see any of the housing finance company facing any pressure uh, of, of any kind. There have been default from a large NBFC on some of the mutual fund who had those papers. They have sold some other papers. But, for example, India Bulls Housing has just raised more than 2,000 uh, crore uh, from, from uh, the money market uh, at 7.7% at in the CT market and uh, around 8.85% in the bond market. 
So our rates are intact. Nobody has sold our paper. This, there is some panic about you know your ILM position in the market, which is unwarranted and unfounded. Because even our company, if you see now, we are we are very comfortable. If you see the one one year uh, uh, ILM, we are more than 25 percent positive side, and there is no issue at all on the liquidity side. And we are having more than 1,600 crores line of credit, which can take care of for another six to nine months. And uh, growth of uh, portfolio also, we are seeing as usual only. There is no nothing. Unusual in the market and NPA level also, but all these things are quite unfounded. Okay, Mr. Huda, Mr. Vardarajan, thanks really for giving us that perspective. And can't close in the show before getting a technical expert in. Uh, Kunal, what is your sense? What's happening after this breach of 11K? Are we in for some more slide come Monday morning? So not maybe immediately, Aisha, but I believe that uh, you know with this kind of sell-off, you know the tone for the next one and a half or two months for the index is definitely on the downside. You know. Uh, two of the recent uh, you know falls which we had seen one on you know that demonetization fall we, we had fallen a similar sort of uh, you know uh, point wise uh, in terms of nifty recovered intraday the recent one was in february 2018 where we had a 200 odd point fall but nifty managed to recover in a single day but what transpired on both the occasions is that over the next one month of both these occasions the nifty drifted gradually lower by almost 4 to 5% so if you try and look at it in in terms of Current situation, uh, 11,100 odd. I believe the index should drift towards 10,600, 650 before we find some sort of stability on the indices. Mm. All right, uh, gentlemen, appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Kunal, thank you for that uh, you know, important and quick take. Uh, well, thank God it's Friday. It's been a bad, it's been a horrible, it's been a terrible week if you are a Yes Bank shareholder. But rest of the market, I would say glass half full, glass half empty because rupee has stopped falling. And uh, IT stocks uh, also have made a comeback. So glass half full, glass half empty, depending on whom you're asking, I guess you'll get a different answer. And what is in your portfolio, really? But anyway, we'll catch you with all the trading action on Monday morning. Enjoy your weekend. It's a much-needed breather. It's a goodbye from all of us here.